Otter's Workshop. It has been a Nettie Bonkers morning, but I'm really excited to be here with you guys again today. Um, as you've noticed, a couple of housekeeping things. We've moved the Blogger's Workshop to Tuesdays instead of Mondays. I thought it was a fantastic idea to start your week out right. However, I need to do a little bit of planning and a little preparation for this, and I just couldn't seem to get it together on Sundays to do that. So I've decided to move the Blogger's Workshop to Tuesday, and we're going to keep it at 10.30. So mark it on your calendars that we have changed the day, but we have kept the time. Okay, so let's talk about today's topic. We're going to discuss uh, creating a daily action plan today. Um, one of the most important things that you can do for your blog is have a daily action plan. If you don't know what you need to get done during the day, then how do you know if you've done it or not? You know, I spent way too long, way too long, going through the motions, um, clicking refresh on Facebook over and over and over and over again, and then, you know, you go to email and you click the refresh on Gmail because maybe you've got an email that's really important that, yeah, it's really, really easy to get sucked into that trap. And when you do that, you're not building your blog. Those are not income producing activities. Those are not activities that create a community, that drive traffic, that get you sales. Those are time wasters. And those are things you do when you don't have a daily plan because you don't know what to do with yourself. So today we're going to work out how you can create your own daily plan. Like I have mine and mine may not work for you because you may not dig the things I dig, okay? So we're going to go through and we'll figure out how you can create your very own customized daily action plan. Oh, my nose is so itchy. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, like the first thing on the plan, and this is going to be the same, I mean, as long as you're a blogger, it's going to be the same for everyone, and that is to publish content. You've got to get that done. Um, if for some reason, like, you can't get your content done in the morning, um, then maybe you do your content at night and then you work on that content from last night the next day. So your daytime things are like to work on yesterday's content if you can't publish in the morning. If you can publish in the morning, I highly, highly recommend that you publish as early as you can in the day so that you can spend the rest of the day marketing, so that you can spend the rest of the day driving traffic, so you can spend the rest of the day getting eyes on your piece of content. Okay. So let's just talk for one second about content. This really isn't a content creation workshop today. But since content is the basis of your blogging business, we want, we want to talk about it just for a second. Um, when you're writing content, when you're publishing content, you want to make sure that the content that you're sharing with the world is valuable. Now, I'm not saying that you have to write like a gold bar worth of value every single day. But when you're writing, think about your audience. You know, and this brings us to clarity because this is what I talk about every single time. You've got to be clear. You've got to know who you're talking to, who you're trying to connect with, with your blog and with your posts. And once you know who they are, it's pretty easy to figure out what they need. I mean, you can go find them online. You can go join forums where they hang out and listen. They'll ask questions. They'll they'll complain about stuff. They'll they'll post things that they're worried about, that they're having trouble with, they're having issues with. Those are all wonderful things for you because those are problems that you can solve and value that you can bring to the table. So, you know, my friend Kelly yesterday, she wrote this awesome post uh, a while back on Think Traffic, which you all know is one of my favorite blogs. Corbett talked about writing epic shit. And Kelly mentioned yesterday that as we love that post, it kind of was anxiety producing because writing epic shit, like, can be kind of scary. Like, you don't know if you're writing epic shit. You don't know if, like, what you are is epic enough. But Kelly pointed it out, and you guys should go read um, read her post, and I'll find a link to it somewhere. Um, but she pointed out that so you don't have to be epic every single day. Yes, it is important to write epic shit, but you don't have to do it every single day. You know, do it once or twice a week, or, you know, or whatever schedule that you can be epic on. But for your blog to flourish, you still need to be putting out content. And you still be, need to be putting out valuable content. But that value may come from, like, my audience, work-at-home moms, maybe from a recipe. You know, there are some really, really good PLR companies out there now where you can 
buy recipes. You know, fix them up, make them your own, add a new image, stick it on your blog, and then share it like crazy. That's still valuable because my market, I mean, I posted yesterday on Facebook, like, what's for dinner? And so many people are like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, we never get it to the table. So that's a value that I can give. And it doesn't take me spending hours and hours and hours writing a blog post to provide that value. So please, don't get overwhelmed with the whole content and epicness thing. Yes, you absolutely want to provide value every single time you put a blog post out. You want to be in the back of your mind thinking, what does this give my audience? What are they going to take away from this? If they can't take something away, whether it's something to implement, a tip, a trick, an idea, a thought, or even just something to think about, something to ponder for the day, something that gets their brain turning, that's valuable as well. But you want to make sure that your audience can take something away from your post, something that will bring them back. You know, that's, that's what value is. The value is what brings them back. You can drive traffic to anything. You can drive traffic to garbage, and please believe me, many people do. But people don't come back for more garbage. You may be able to get them there, but your valuable content is going to keep them coming back over and over again. Okay? So, <clears throat> You know, I have a little game plan post on my blog, and again, I'll find a link for that as well. Um, and it walks people through, like, how to come up with content, how to identify your group, how to figure out what they need and what they want, and then how to identify the kind of content that you can be writing that will help them and that they'll find valuable. So that's content. First things first, you have to have decent content. Um, next, uh, there's a few ways you can drive traffic, and I think it really, this is an individual thing, because... Different people feel comfortable doing different things. Uh, you can buy traffic. I mean, if you don't have a lot of time but you've got some money, buy traffic. You can easily just spend a little bit of money and drive traffic either to your blog or to an opt-in page. If you're going to buy traffic, I suggest you send it directly to your opt-in page because then you're going to be building your list and you can send blog posts to the, your list later on. But definitely if you're spending money on traffic, send them to your opt-in page so you can capture that lead and then you can connect with them over time. Uh, me personally, I prefer to drive traffic from social, from being social, from connecting, from creating relationships and building my community. That's kind of my goal um, in my business is to build, you know, a community of my 1,000 raving fans, okay? So it, you need to be clear, again, here's this clarity thing, you need to be clear about what you're willing to do and how, what you feel comfortable doing. Please don't force yourself to jump into buying traffic because it's what you should do if it doesn't feel good for you. Because you are not. If it feels gross to you to spend money on traffic, you're not going to get the results that you want. I, I guarantee it. It is perfectly doable to use social media, to use uh, different venues on the internet to build a community and drive traffic to your blog and your opt-in pages that way. So again, get clear about what it is that you feel comfortable and feel most excited about doing. Because when you are excited about whatever it is that you're doing, people feel that. And it's contagious and you want to share that excitement with people. Okay, so with that being said, um, I'm going to kind of go through like my action plan. I'm going to show you the steps that I've taken to create it and why it works for me. Okay. Um, the first thing that I always do, and, and I think everyone really needs to do this, whether you're doing SEO, you're doing social, or you're doing, well, pay traffic, not so much. But let's, we're going to talk for the rest of this time about SEO and, um, and about social just because that's what I do and that's what I know best. Okay. So the first thing that I do is syndicate. That means I just share my post across different platforms. Um, I have gone through the trouble of finding different platforms where my audience hangs out. Whether it's social platforms like Pinterest um, or Facebook, or whether it's different communities. Like there's uh, the Moms Blogger Club, which is a mean community, 19, 20,000 mom bloggers. Hello, talk about my perfect target market. So you can look around on the internet and find places where your target market hooks up. You know, Kim Roach talks about her dad started this little site um, on Tennessee walking horses, which is what my daughter rides, which is kind of exciting. Um, and he found this one forum 
that was just filled with everyone that was interested in his topic. And he's driving tons and tons of traffic from that one spot. Um, you know, we went online not too long ago looking for information about training horses, and we found lots of very popular, very active forums on horse topics. So you can find that. wherever, Whatever topic you have, you can find a place online where people who enjoy that topic um, or want to know more about that topic hang out. Uh, one of the easiest ways to do it is to um, Google, like, communities plus and then your topic or forums plus your topic and then just start digging around. You know, this may take you a little bit of time and that's okay because you need this stuff. This is like your foundation for driving traffic. So if you have to spend a little bit of time to find a place that's going to serve your purpose and that you're going to be able to connect with the people that you need to connect with, that's okay. My suggestion would be don't get lost. Um, set a timer. Give yourself a specific amount of time to work on this. And then when I find, when I have a timer running, that I just go. Instead of piddle farting around, I end up boom, 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 knocking things out. And it usually takes way less time than if I just, you know, thought about the fact I had all day to get it done. So find some places to, to syndicate your content. Of course, you know, go across social networks. But if you're in the marketing game, there's tons and tons of Ning sites that are related to internet marketing where you can go. And the thing that's cool about Ning sites is that when you post anything, like whether you interact in a group on the on that in that Ning community or anything that you do, it gets posted on the front page of the site. So anybody looking at the front page is going to see you, which is going to allow them to click through to your home page and see your information. And if you've got your blog RSS like in the little side, then they'll see your post and be able to click through there. Um, just keep in mind when you're using communities to connect that it's not a place to sell your wares, okay? This is about being social. It's about being interactive. It's about connecting with other people who have similar interests and that you can help with your content. But it's not about just going in there and just trying to sell whatever it is that you're selling. You really want to work on connecting and getting to know people and then, you know, if you find that somebody's asking a question and you have a blog post that answers that question specifically, make sure you check the rules of the community to make sure it's okay, but then post a link to the blog post and say, oh, hey, I wrote about this topic. I hope this helps or whatever. Okay? But we're not just going to roll in there and throw up affiliate links and try and get people to buy in a community. That is not what it's about. Okay? So Ning communities, um, those are great places to, to start syndicating your content. Okay, the next thing I do, well, the next thing that's on my list, I don't necessarily do it in any given order on any given day, depending on how I'm feeling. Um, for me, I am, like to connect with other people who blog. I, I like to connect specifically with beginning bloggers who are struggling because what I have to offer helps them. So one of the great places that I've found is to, uh, to cruise blog hops. There are some really, really great blog hops out there now. Um, they used to be, I used to not really get into them, but now you can find blog hops for Pinterest. You can find blog hops for Facebook. So it's a way to not only connect with new people, but it's also a way to build up my community on different social networks. So <clears throat> you may find as you go through different blog hops that um, there's a lot, some of the same people, which is great because as soon as people start seeing your name and seeing you across different platforms, they'll start to remember you even more and they'll want to more connect with you, which is what it's all about, right? Okay, so blog hops, you can easily find blog hops um, the same way. Google your topic plus blog hop or link up or linky, like any of those kind of words, and you'll get a list that'll come back. And you can go check it out. Some of them are super busy. Some of them will be dead. Some of them, you know, will only have a couple people. But there's one that I do now for Pinterest because I, Pinterest is one of the communities that I focus on. And it's the Pincentive blog hop. I stopped over there this morning. It just started today. And already there was like 100 people had already linked up. So that's one really great way to, uh, that's one really good one. And what they do is you put a blog post up and then people go to your blog and then they pin the post. So make sure if you're going to do that and you know you're working with Pinterest that you have a pinnable image and good content that works well on Pinterest. 
Uh, but there are tons and tons of blog hops on any given topic, and you can find lots of different types of people uh, doing blog hops as well. So I will go and I will, this, this is important. Timer. You need a timer. Blog hops can be huge time suck because there's so much great stuff out there and you're meeting so many great people, but you can really get sucked in and waste the, not waste, use the whole day just on this one little piece. So I have, you'll see here on my, I printed out my my thing, and you'll see here on the cruise blog hops, I have a time goal here, 30 minutes. 30 minutes once a day. 30 minutes, one time a day. I also use blog hops as a way to comment on other blogs, which is a great way to build links, build uh, your name recognition, connect with other bloggers, and get links so that your post does better uh, in Google as well. 30 minutes. I can seriously go through, especially a busy blog hop, I could be there all day, and I look up and I'll, damn, it's time to go pick Hannah up from school. So set the timer. If you have a phone, there's a timer right on it. Okay, just set the timer for 30 minutes, get done what you get done, and then stop and do more tomorrow. Okay, it's not about trying to get it all done today, it's trying to be consistent every day. Okay, so that's my 30 minute cruise blog hops comment on blogs. Um, and then, you know, I have this online, as, I mean, on my computer. So when I find a really great place that I want to make sure I can go back to and I can find again, because sometimes you come across great things as you're going. I do have this in a document on my computer, so I can add that link, and I'll be able to find it again. Um, and when it gets too different, I just print out a new copy. Okay, forums is definitely one of the places I look, and we, we've talked about it a little bit. I have a 15-minute time limit on forums, and this is just for me. I can find myself um, spending hours in forums just trying to find something to comment on. And I find when I give myself a small amount of time that I really hone in and focus and find something to comment on quickly. Because here's the deal. If you're going to use forums, just reading forum posts doesn't count. You have to be typing and sharing and hitting the submit button if you're going to be in a forum. So my little trick is this is one of the things I do. I like to provide great, valuable content in the forum itself. So my first thing is I find um, content or I write something. This is a great way to use PLR. If you've got some quality PLR that's relevant to the forum topic, grab a piece of PLR. You might like change it up a little bit so that it's shorter because you don't want to post a whole like 300 word article. But a couple paragraphs, um, a tip, a suggestion, and then go into the forum and start a new thread with that content. Now you don't want to be salesy in this. You don't want to be uh, you know, pointing people back at your blog or back to your business opportunity or whatever you're doing. This is your way to become a valuable resource in people's minds. When you use forums, there's a thing called a signature. And it is a piece of content that you can put in, like a one or two line thing, at the, and it's usually in the CP, which is the, the user panel, something like that. You'll find it. There's a place where you go and you can put this signature in so every single time that you post on the forum, your signature comes up just below your post. Like I point mine to my free uh, social media superstar free report and 14 day course. So I'm providing again something valuable and something free, a good reason for someone to click from the forum to what I have to offer. So don't offer things in your post. Um, don't try and get people to click back from the things that you're sharing, but let your signature do the work in the forum. Okay, so I will go in, I will post one piece of content, and then I try to, um, I've got here five threads to reply to. I'm finding that very difficult to hit in 15 minutes. Um, so, you know, that's one really great thing about being an entrepreneur, and is you can start, and you have to start. Start somewhere, pick a number, it doesn't matter what the number is. Try it for a week, see how it goes. If you can't hit the number that you picked, change the number. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not set in stone. Nothing is set in stone. So I picked five threads to reply to when I set up this, and now I'm finding that three is probably going to be more my number when it comes to 15 minutes in a forum. To put up my one piece of content so that other people can start replying to me and start getting to know me, and then me helping other people out by answering questions or, you know, connecting with them. 
Okay, Pinterest is another place that I spend my time because my market is in Pinterest. Okay, that's where they spend their time. So I want to get myself in between the traffic and my blog. So I post um, my blog posts on Pinterest when they're appropriate. I don't post every single one because every single one is not a good fit for Pinterest. But the things that are, I definitely post them to Pinterest. Um, my time for Pinterest is 15 minutes twice a day because I like to do a little in the morning and a little in the evening. I find early and late are good times for Pinterest. <laughs> Hang on one second. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so I find that morning and night are good times for Pinterest, and I like to be spread out. I don't like to just be there for 15 minutes first thing in the morning, and then nobody that comes on later in the day ever sees anything about me. So that's what I do. So 30 minutes a day on Pinterest is more than enough, and I just break it up. For me, that works. I break it up into two times a day. Pinterest is also Saturday morning, huge, huge time to be on Pinterest is Saturday morning. For some reason, like it's so cooking focused that I think a lot of people get on there to uh, create their grocery list, to create their meal plan, to really uh, get ready to go shopping and stuff. But Saturday morning is huge on Pinterest. Um, so what I do for my here, this is the key to creating a really good daily action plan. Let's just talk about this for a minute because you'll see, you have seen as I've gone through that I have specific themes that I want to get done when I'm on each of the platforms that I'm working on. And if you don't know exactly what you want to do, you're going to end up wasting a lot of time. So you need to get clear about each platform that you're going to specifically work with. You need to know what activities, what actions you need to be taking on that platform. What works to drive traffic to your blog to connect you to other people to create a community on that platform? What are those action steps that you need to be taking? Then write them down. Write them down so that you know exactly what you need to be doing in that 15 or 30 minutes or whatever time frame you have set up for that activity. So for Pinterest, my, my activities are to pin five new pieces of content, at least one of my own. And when I mean new content, I don't mean repinning. I mean going to somebody's blog. And this overlaps. You'll see this overlaps. Like when I'm going through Blog Hop, I make comments on that post, but I also may pin it. And there's one of my five pins for the day. Um, I, uh, in fact, I have the Pincentive blog hop, a link to it right here in my Pinterest area. Um, pinned group boards. Getting on group boards in Pinterest is huge, and it's not hard to do. As you start um, getting into relationships and, and connecting with other pinners and other bloggers, for that matter, because it's usually bloggers that set up those group, those group boards, um, you'll find that you get invited to more group boards. Group boards are awesome because your content gets in front of a lot more people than just your people. Like when I pin to one of my boards, like the people that see it are my followers. When I pin to a group board, the people that see it are the followers of every single person that's involved in that board. So I may have, you know, 1,200 followers, which is awesome, but my group board may reach 20,000. And if those 20,000, a few of them, you know, hit repin, then it spreads that reach even further. So try and get on group boards. Start connecting with other people. Like look for group boards on Pinterest and connect with the owners of those boards and ask them if you can get on. It's like, it's not like a secret society or something. It's not high school in a small town where only the cool kids get on the group board. You can do it. Just you gotta connect with the people and just ask them. You know, it's not that hard. Um, follow five new boards. This I usually do as I'm pinning, and it kind of works together. When I pin, when you pin a new post, it will give you, after you pin, it will show you a, another board that this same pin is pinned to, and I just click the follow button. So it doesn't take a lot of time. You just kind of have to get a little streamlined thing going. Uh, like five pins and repin five pins. Uh, great ways to connect with pinners, and when you connect with other people on Pinterest, they're going to be more likely to connect with you and to look and see what you're doing and to follow your boards. Oh boy. Okay, so Facebook time. Facebook and I, you know, we have a love-hate relationship. I hated Facebook for the longest time, but now that I'm used to it, 
Like I could just sink my whole day into refreshing Facebook, refreshing Facebook, refreshing. That's no good. Facebook, especially, you have to know exactly why you're there and exactly what you're doing. I suggest, and I'm suggesting this probably more to myself than maybe to you, because as I'm getting ready to suggest this, I see I'm not doing it myself. I suggest if you're not working on your Facebook time that you shut your Facebook tab. Mine's open. There's three things right there. Calling my name right now. I really want to click, but I can't because I'm doing this hangout with you. Um, so Facebook time. If there's Facebook linkies out there where people are just sharing their pages, and you can like people's pages and build your, your Facebook fan page likes that way. A great way. Um, I personally use Post Planner to help me get content out on a regular basis on my pages and sometimes onto uh, into groups and then sometimes onto my profile. I find for myself personally that I have better luck putting content out there and then engaging with people once they engage with my content. Instead of sitting around thinking, oh crap, what am I going to post now? What am I going to post now? What am I going to post now? Oh, it's been two hours. I need to post something on Facebook. That like just messes with my whole day. So I use Post Planner to schedule out the stuff I go on. Uh, the stuff that goes out on my Facebook account. All my pages, um, when I have a recipe, I share them in different groups through Post Planner. Um, and I love Post Planner because you can brand it. It's branded to my blog and it links back, uh, I think, to one of my opt-in pages now. I test different things as we go. Um, but when somebody clicks on it, it goes somewhere that's related to me, which is really awesome. The other thing about being able to brand your posts is that when, like you use Hootsuite, which I used for a while, and it works great. It annoys me because you can't brand it, and every time something posts from Hootsuite, it says, posted from Hootsuite. So everyone knows that you're not actually on Facebook, that you're just automize, automating your stuff. And and I don't know if this is everybody or it's just because I'm a marketer and I really know that. Like I kind of discount everything that comes from Hootsuite now. So for me, that's, that's one of the main reasons I quit using it is because when other people use it, it annoys me. So I don't use it anymore. I do use Post Planner because it doesn't look like I'm using an automated tool. It just looks like I'm, I'm posting Facebook. So I, use, I add Post to Post Planner. That's one of the things I do. And it's an app right inside Facebook. So it's actually you're on Facebook when you're using it. So I add Post to Post Planner. Um, I share my, pay, my post from, that I publish on any given day on my pages and my profile. Um, I participate in, there's um, some really cool groups that I like on Facebook and I participate in those groups just so I'm part of the community. Again, if you're going to use social media to grow your blog and to grow your traffic, you have to be social. It's social media. It's not about just throwing links in a group and, and running away the other way to post another link in another group. You have to choose a few. Choose a few groups that you really like, that you like the people in them, you like the topic, you like what you're talking about. You can connect with those people around what they're talking about. Choose a few and actually be part of the group. I have um, a group that it's a blog sharing group and I love it because they do like swaps of blog posts on their pages and it's just a really interactive, fun group with really cool moms and bloggers in it. So I participate in that group on a regular basis every day and I attempt to start it's on my list I, I suck at it but I start conversations with new people which you can do by um, going on pages that are people related you know that are relevant to your topic and your your niche um, and as people comment or or like create a conversation on those pages you know this is good for celebrity pages like Guy Kawasaki there's always people commenting Take a, uh, go through and take a few minutes to, to read through some of the responses he gets and then message the person, one of the people, you know, making a comment. If they make an intelligent comment about something that's related to something you do, go ahead and send them a message and tell them, oh, hey, I saw your comment on blah, blah, blah page. Uh, you seem really, you know, interesting and I'm always looking to get to know new people. So blah, 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 start a conversation. I have a number on my paper of conversations I'm supposed to be starting, which I have failed miserably at, and so we may be looking at that number again. But again, about getting started. You've got to start implementing so you can see what works. Some things will work and some things will fall flat, but you don't know until you start doing it. 
And then, like, I have, I either run an ad on Facebook or I boost a post or something to get more traffic to something good that I've written. And that's where, like, your epic shit post comes in. You don't want to boost every single post. You don't want to boost, you know, something that's not awesome. But when you write something awesome or you write something that's going to be really share-worthy or people are really going to dig it, then boost it or put an ad up for it and get people to it. So that's my Facebook time. Um, and again, 30 minutes, two times a day. Facebook, I get a lot of traffic from Facebook. I, I do a lot of business on Facebook. So I've chosen to spend a lot of time on Facebook. You know, an hour for you in a day may not be possible, but figure it out for you. You may do 10 minutes a day twice a day, or you might do 10 minutes a day three times a day. Because you can fit in 10 minute little segments. And that's fine. However the time thing works for you, make sure you have a time. Because if you don't, you're either going to get sucked in or you're going to be like, oh gosh, I just don't have time to do Facebook right now. Because you think it's going to take an hour if you go on there. But if you know and you set a timer that you have 10 minutes, you can do that. And you're more likely to do that because you're more likely, your brain's likely to think, oh, well, I do have 10 minutes to do this. So I'm going to set the clock and let's go and get it done. Okay, Twitter is another one of my things. Same deal. You've got to know exactly what you're doing on Twitter. Why are you there? If you're just scrolling through your Twitter feed for 30 minutes, that's not going to get you anything on Twitter. That's not, you know, reading doesn't count. As much as I love to read, and reading daily does count, reading your Twitter stream or your Facebook stream or a forum stream doesn't count. You've got to be participating. Uh, so, Adding new posts to Twitter, uh, sharing people, other people's posts, retweeting posts, replying. When somebody comments about you or shares your post or retweets your post, like, talk to them. <laughs> they obviously like something that you're doing, so talk to them. Reply back. Have a conversation. That is where things really start to make it rock and roll on Twitter is when you can have a conversation with the people there. Um, and then there's Twitter parties. Twitter parties are a great way to meet new people, to really connect and really to get people to remember you. I used to do this Twitter party. My friend Pepper used to do one. Um, and it was, uh, oh, I can't remember what it was. It was awesome, though. You could sign up with your blog, and she would pick 20 blogs. Um, comment hour, that's what it was. And she would pick 20 blogs, and for an hour, she would just pull out a blog and, like, share it on Twitter, and then everyone in the party would run to the blog, they would comment on the blog, share it, and then come back for the next one. It was insane. It was, like, 20 blogs in an hour to go comment and then plus keep up with the Twitter chat. It was nuts, but it was a lot of fun. And I remember those girls who were at the Twitter party regularly. I remember them, and I still visit their blogs. So if you want to find... There are... Um, like, what am I looking for? There's lists of Twitter parties on the internet. So if you're looking for a Twitter party, just um, go on Google and search. Search for uh, Twitter parties plus your topic. Um, there's some great ones for blogging. There's great ones for internet marketing. But there are Twitter parties literally for every single topic that you could think of. And it's a great way to connect with people who are interested in the same things as you and interested in the thing that you blog in. So make sure if you're going to use Twitter that you do tw at least one Twitter party a week. I definitely recommend that. Um, Google Plus is my new best friend. I am really, really enjoying Google Plus and all that they have to offer. Um, my specifics for Google Plus are to share a post. Um, I'm connected on quite a few communities in Google Plus which are so much different and so much better than Facebook groups. Um, they have communities on every topic. I am in a wonderful hobby farm group community there where anytime something happens with my garden, like I go in there and I talk to people and I've had lots of people add me to those circles. So then when I have something different to share or something, a blog post that's relevant, then I can share that there. This group also has a, a board on Pinterest. So it's another great way to share blog posts. If I write, like, uh, what I did out of freeze tomatoes, I did a blog post on that. Shared it in that community. I shared it on that Pinterest board. And my blog post had a chance to get in front of a lot of faces that I alone would not have been able to get them in front of. That is the power of communities on social media, is that you get to leverage 
the networks and the people that other people know. But you've got to use the community as a community and not as a place where you can just go and blast your links. Okay? I know I keep saying it, but it is so freaking important. And I see so many people doing this little tiny piece wrong. And when you do it wrong, it gives you a bad name and then people ignore you. And being ignored is probably the worst possible thing that could happen if you're using social media to build your blog and to build your community. It is so easy to hide, unlike, undo, unsee people that it doesn't take much to make people hit that hide button. And as soon as they've hidden you, they don't see you anymore. So it doesn't matter how awesome you get, like they just don't see you. So please, if you're going to use communities on any community and any social networking site, use them. Don't just drop and run. Okay? Okay. I know. I don't know. Okay. And then the last like social thing that I do is, and again, Google Plus is 15 minutes twice a day. A lot of my things are twice a day. Um, Twitter is 10 minutes three times a day, just because I like to be in and out of that stream pretty regularly through the day. And again, you pick times that work for you. I don't know your schedule. I'm home, you know, and Hannah's in school now, so I have the whole day. I can easily, you know, schedule in 10 minutes three times a day. It's not a problem for me. You, it will still work. Don't, don't think, oh, well, God, I can't do it three times a day, so I just can't do that at all. You can. Do what you can do, but do what you can do every day. Consistency. If you play on Twitter for 10 minutes a day, two days, and then you're not there for 10, it's not going to work. That's why it's a daily action plan. So choose numbers, choose places, choose platforms, and go to it. Give it a week. Do it steady for a week and see how it's going, and then revise. Revamp, revise. That's what it's all about. But you've got to get started because you don't know what's going to work. You don't know how it's going to flow for you unless you actually do it. Okay, my last platform that I use for social is Empire Avenue, and I found out about this in uh, one of our trainings in the 15K formula, uh, which is uh, one of the best internet training products I've ever had in my life. Um, and uh, Chris Record actually was talking about how he gets all the traffic from his to his blog just for free, and Empire Avenue is one of the ways that he does that. It's basically a site where it's kind of like the stock exchange for people, like, and you, when you join, you become a stock, and then you can buy and sell stock. It's kind of a game, and it's a little complicated, but once you get involved in it, like, it kind of makes sense. And you can run missions where you ask people to do things, and you have this fake money on Empire Avenue, and you pay them in this fake money so they can earn more of their fake money. Um, so... Uh, you can have you can run missions where you ask people to like like your your Facebook status or you have them retweet something or go to your blog or you can do anything that you want and if people are willing to do it then you can pay them to do it on this fake money that you buy sell and earn it on Empire Avenue they're called Eves. Um, this is a little complicated if like <laughs> if you're freaking out about this don't worry about it like I just started getting steady back into Empire Avenue again because it is a little bit overwhelming. But if you get it and you want to do it, then go for it. You know, it's a great way. Like running a mission is a great way to be able to um, like give your stuff a boost on social media to help get it to go viral. Um, it's it's one of the best and easiest ways to do that without paying, you know, to boost your post on Facebook or something. So like my I buy stock, I give shout outs, I do missions. Um, to earn more money, and then I run a mission. And that's what I do in my time on Empire Avenue. And then the last thing that's on my daily action plan is to email my list. And I, I know that you know that building your list is the most important thing that you can do. Um, I know you know that. And if you're not doing it yet, you need to start doing it. Um, it's one of the things that I love most about Empower Network. I floundered with my list on Internet Marketing for Mommies, on Wham Life. I, I floundered with this whole list thing for a long time. Um, but, you know, with Empower Network, it's all built in. The only thing you have to do is, like, hook your autoresponder up to it, and it's good to go from start to finish. There's no creating opt-in pages. There's no none of that. It's all done for you already. All you have to do is just connect the two pieces of things and then go. Um, so I email my list 
that's one of the best ways that you can get traffic to your blog post and it's one of the best ways that you can convert your readers into people who buy what you have to offer. Um, so make sure that you mail every day. I know it seems like a lot. I used to mail like once a week and I noticed that like either people really get interested or they get off my list which is okay now that I'm mailing every day. I mean there are people who mail five and six times a day. Personally I think that's a little excessive but that's just me. But you do need to be mailing every day. Um, so that's what I do. And then I have some other things that like, I do uh, not as every day, um, like ad swaps. I'm going to start looking into that and finding banner ads and things like that. And those are more kind of uh, once a week or once a month kind of things. But if you're doing social media and you're trying to build your community, you want to identify. Now, this is a lot. I'm, I'm not going to say this is like an hour a day's work. It's obviously not. It's more than that because I have more time than that. But any single one of these options work if you work it regularly. So don't feel like you have to do every single one of these things. Pick two. Pick two. Really. Pick two. And do. Choose where you want to spend your time and spend your time on purpose there every single day. Now, whether you want to syndicate and connect with other bloggers through blog hops, fine, do that. I don't care if you use Facebook or not. Not everybody has to be on Facebook. In fact, it's getting harder to be on Facebook because so many people are there. But Facebook is awesome if you decide that you want to invest the time. But if you don't, then don't worry about it find something else. The most important thing is that you find two things that you don't dread doing, that you actually look forward to, and you do them every single day. Okay. So I think that's about it. Wow, 45 minutes. Getting windier here, I think. Okay, so if you have questions, feel free to find me on Facebook. Um, I'm mom to Hannah, M-O-M-T-O-H-A-N-N-A. Friend me, ask me questions, you're right on my wall, whatever. You know, we'll help you figure it out. If you are struggling to get started with a blog, if the tech stuff is overwhelming you, if you can't figure out the plugins and the uploading and the FTP and all that, I highly recommend that you take a look at Empower Network because we are getting ready to launch a brand new, all new platform that is going to seriously be point and click blogging. And it's going to be so simple, and it's going to be so easy, and it's still going to have all the benefits, the SEO benefits, all of the exciting stuff that makes Empower so powerful, but it's going to be even easier. There will no longer be WordPress blog. It will all be like the Empower Network platform, and it literally will be logging into your back office, clicking a button, putting things up, and it will all also work from your mobile phone. So if you're out and about, and you want to take a picture, you want to take a video, you want to show something, you can literally video from your blog, hit two buttons, and have it posting to your blog. I mean, if you want to take video from your phone, sorry. Um, one or two clicks, and it will be on your blog, and you'll be able to share it from there. So if you're struggling with the tech stuff, or if you're struggling with being able to sit down at your laptop or your computer to get the work done, I seriously suggest you take a look at Empower Network. There's um, buttons below this. You can join the team. If you click that, you'll be on my team. You can, uh, I will be around to help you. You'll be part of the Rebel Marketers, which is a subset of the Prosperity team, and you will have everything that we have to offer to help you succeed. Um, and you'll also have you know, a built-in affiliate product if you decide to become an affiliate of Empower as well. You will automatically have products to sell. There will be no more creating your own whatever. And you'll have all your opt-in pages and everything else. So you have a business in a box with a super awesome, super simple, tech-free blog as well. Okay? All right. So I will catch you next week, same place, same time, Tuesdays, 1030 at whamliferocks.com uh, slash the bloggers workshop. I hope you have a great week. Blog on, baby, and I will see you next time.